Hello, everybody. Welcome to ICAD's uh, June 2023 update on what's happening here in Israel, Palestine. It's not really an update. It's really more kind of thoughts um, of important issues, of important developments underneath the news that are going on here that I think are important in us, for us to understand what's going on. What I want to talk about this month is um, a new amnesty report that just came out that's called Automating Apartheid. Uh, you can look it up on the Amnesty website, of which ICAD and myself played a role, an advisory role in preparing the report. Uh, the report really gets into an issue that's, uh, that really is, you know, underlying a lot of what's happening here. And that's, uh, you know, Israel's uh, ability to control Palestinians, not so much through active military actions, which it does all the time, or through other repressive measures that it does all the time, but really through the use of, um, of surveillance, very sophisticated surveillance technologies that Israel is really one of the world's leaders in, largely because it has the Palestinian laboratory. I mean, what other country in the world, maybe except China with the Uyghurs, what other country really has millions of people um, under its control, Palestinians in the occupied territories, in which you can do anything it wants to with. It can kill them, it can survey them, it can uh, expel them, it can demolish their homes. I, 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 we know the litany of what Israel can do to Palestinians without any oversight not of the Israeli parliament, and certainly not of the international community. There is some oversight, like the Amnesty Report shows, in terms of international agencies, especially private agencies, civil society agencies, Amnesty Human Rights Watch, the UN, plus a lot of um, uh, groups that are trying to monitor what's going on in Palestine and around the world in terms of surveillance uh, and so on. Um, but they have very little effect, because even though what Israel is doing violates, and you can just go down the list, which Amnesty does, every article of every human rights and inter law, international law convention that exists, there's no enforcement. And so Israel really is free to do anything it wants to do on the Palestinians. And that has significance not only for the Palestinians, but globally. Because the Palestinians are not really Israel's concern. They're not an existential concern. They're not um, a threat in any significant military or security way. They're guinea pigs for Israel. So that, so that Israel basically uses this uh, panopticon, that's the Palestinian laboratory in the West Bank in, in particular, and East Jerusalem, but also in Gaza, in order to develop these very sophisticated surveillance technologies on the ground, but many of them connected to drone technology, because Israel is the world's leader in the production of drones, both surveillance drones, but also weaponized drones. And one thing we have to keep in mind is that the police forces around the world are beginning to order more drones than militaries are. So drones have very... Uh, insidious uh, civilian use against all of us. So really, in a sense, the implications of all this are that, um, that Israel really is one of the global leaders in what you might call pacification. The idea is to take these uh, um, surveillance technologies and high-tech technologies of control and repression, including, including weapon systems, technologies of repression, that are used against civilian populations, and then to export them. So that really you, <laughs> the citizens of whatever country you're living in, you're the, in a sense, the, the, the final user of this project, or your governments are the final users against you. So the implications of what Israel does in Hebron, with uh, what Amnesty describes as the wolf pack surveillance system. In other words, Israel has... a uh, uh, a surveillance system that's developed with, with companies abroad called Wolfpack, in which it, 
uh, it collects uh, facial recognition data from every single Palestinian living under its control in the West Bank and East Jerusalem. And uh, under this system, uh, people's pa uh, you know, faces are photographed without their consent and in many cases without their knowledge. So there's thousands of cameras throughout the West Bank to simply take people's pictures. Certainly checkpoints are a place where pictures can be taken all the time. But even Israeli soldiers, because the wolf pack system, part of it is what's called uh, the blue wolf system. It takes this massive biometric, and Israel is one of the world's leaders in biometric research, which is not only facial recognition, but especially around the eyes. Um, and that's one reason why Israel is a leader, let's say, in airport security. I mean, your local airport is likely to have uh, Israeli security systems. Safe cities are surveillance systems that Israel is exporting all over the world. Glasgow, the liberal city of Glasgow in Scotland, just bought an Israeli safe city uh, system that has CCTV cameras, but all kinds of facial recognition and biometric recognition technologies in it. So that what Israel is doing then with this wolf pack system uh, and the blue wolf system, which takes this massive bio biometric data collecting system and brings it down to, to apps on, on smartphones, is that they give every single soldier or security person, Shabak, you know, the security services, the ability not only to put a, a camera in your face and take your picture, but more than that, to put a camera in your face and download all the information that's been collected on you from uh, facial recognition systems um, all over the West Bank and East Jerusalem that are then put into a massive uh, database. So just by putting the phone up next to your face, the soldier can know who you are, how many families members you have, uh, where you live, where you work, do you have any kind of security problems? Um, you know, do you have a car? Um, who's your, who are your parents? Do your siblings have any kind of security? Everything about you. Um, and right on the spot then, whether it's at a checkpoint or simply in the street, they can arrest you, they can detain you, or they can prevent you from moving, for example, in, into an area where your house is. Uh, it's absolute control, right? So you have the wolf pack system, and in East Jerusalem, it's a similar system that's called the Mabat 2000 system. Mabat means to look at someone. Um, so that Israel's installed a thousand CCTV cameras and other cameras of facial recognition and other types of surveillance throughout East Jerusalem. There's one camera every five meters in all of East Jerusalem. There's 400 cameras only in the old city with the central uh, data collection system that then links into the larger data system of the West Bank. This is all laid out in the Amnesty International Report, again, automating uh, apartheid, you know, which I recommend to all of you. But again, one reason why I bring this up isn't only because of the violations of Palestinian human rights, and this has a chilling effect uh, on Palestinian life. And you know, chilling effect is a term that has significance in international law. Because what it really means is it prevents you from exercising your human rights, your personal rights. For example, all these cameras, even if they're not, you know, pointed at you, you know they're, they're a, 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 you know, big brother. The overall presence that's, that's, that's with you all the time. So that it prevents people from protesting. It prevents people from speaking out. It prevents you from, uh, you know, exercising your freedom of movement. It has a chilling effect, and it has a chilling effect even on, on your daily life. You know, you, you don't know who you're going to meet in the street. There's a person you're going to meet who's your best friend, you know, maybe have some problem with the Israeli security systems, and almost every Palestinian, you know, after 54 years of occupation, has to have a problem or had a problem with the Israeli security, um, uh, with, with Israeli security. 
More than half the Palestinian men and youth, male youth, have been arrested, um, you know, at, some, at one point or another over the years. So everybody is really in this system. Uh, and so, you know, if you're meeting someone, it's, it's kind of uh, guilt by association. So it has a chilling effect, even on your own social relationships, even on relationships within, within, the, uh, within the family. Uh, so that this is all stuff that we should really begin to pay, to pay attention to. Uh, but again, you know, I've, I've always, I've talked about it in my book, War Against the People, I've written about what I call global Palestine. Because again, these technologies are really intended not to control Palestinians. Israel can do that in, in traditional ways. Um, but it really is using the Palestinians as guinea pigs in order to develop a technology that Israel then exports abroad. Um, so that Israel is really um, um, engaging in what I call, and, and I, in my book, War Against the People, I, I get into this more, pacification. This is a term we don't use very often, but it's a very important term because, and I'm not going to get into a whole lecture now, I'm just going to end on this, and we'll talk about it later. And that is that Israel uh, has become one of the main enforcers of the global capitalistic system. You know, in other words, uh, capitalism always tried to work with a smiling face. Entertainment, Ronald McDonald, Disney, and so on. But since the rise of neoliberalism 50 years ago under Reagan and Thatcher, uh, you know, neoliberalism has closed down all kinds of areas of, uh, um, of life. It's become kind of an, uh, there's, and, and with the collapse, of course, of socialism and communism in the Soviet Union and elsewhere, it's become the only system in the world. And it's a system that individualizes us you know, atomizes us, makes us into consumers, you know, the me generation, thinking of me all the time. It destroys communities, but also it creates, as we well know, tremendous income disparities. You know, Oxfam came out with a report last year. You know, we talk about the 1% and the 99%, the 99% of the Occupy movement. Well, it turns out that it's true that um, that 1% of the richest people in the world control half the world's resources. Um, so, that, so that as these income disparities get bigger, and it's not only the poor of the world, the 85% of humanity that are surplus humanity, that will never be a part of the global economic system, it's also beginning to affect the middle classes, the youth, especially the young people today, even in the global north all beginning to be a part of what we call the precariat. People who have no job security, uh, don't have enough income to buy houses and so on, so that as the system closes down on people, on the vast majority of people, whether they're middle class in the global north or the, or the, the people of the global south, the system has to become more violent, it has to become more repressive, and that is the market, that's the niche that Israel is geared for. It's a part of Israel's security politics because if Israel can make itself so useful for governments, whether the global G7 governments that control the world economy or local governments, you know, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, yeah, even China, you know, all over the world, repressive governments that want to repress their own populations, Israel has carved out this niche of pacification, using especially surveillance types of technologies and technologies of repression that I write about in my book, War Against the People. So that, uh, so <laughs> to end, I'm talking way, way too long, but to end, uh, uh, look at the Amnesty Report. Certainly this issue of surveillance and repression uh, of the Palestinians has to be a concern for all of us. But at the same time, let's begin to connect the dots and to see what's happening to the Palestinian guinea pigs is being replicated in your own societies. And then to look at the implications of that. Enough for now. We'll talk next week. Bye, everyone.